it's time for another tarot and oracle collection video. I have all of my decks right here sitting on my coffee table, but I'm first going to show you some decks that are in purgatory, if you will. Decks that I'm not really sure what to do with it. I don't know if I want to keep it. Starting with the Dream Decoder. These are just cards. They're very papery. Like, this is not cardstock at all. And... I feel like it's not even aligned properly, but these are cards where if you dream about money, then you can look through this deck, grab the money card and see what it means when you dream about money. So it's like decoding your dreams. I thought it would be really, really cool, but I have not used it. Then I have Therapets, which is a deck that I used quite a bit for a while, actually, but... I don't know. First of all, the cards are huge. Like, look at this. This is gigantic. But the cards themselves are really cute. They have really fun animals on them. Really cute artwork. And actually, like, meaningful quotes on them. You are not a burden. We are lucky to have you. These are quotes that I feel like are not super cliche, but they make sense and they feel like they're more grounded and they are just really nice messages to hear. But I just, it is so such a huge deck that I, I can't shuffle with this or anything. So that made it really hard for me to use. But I still think the deck itself is really, really great. So if I end up Decluttering this, I think I might do a giveaway on it. Witchling Academy Tarot, another one in Purgatory. This is a deck that I really want to like. I did an entire deck study on this. The box is horrible to get the cards out of and the book just slid out of it. But I have to, yeah. Story is about this witch, Charlie, and she goes to this school. So it's like a sort of Harry Potter vibe, I guess but also not really. And what I think I've just noticed is that I don't do well with the tarot decks that have like a whole story behind them. At first I thought it was really cool and that I wanted more of it, but I actually don't. Because whenever I pull a card, like here, this death card, I have to remember the story. Like what was the actual story behind this specific card? And what is the message there and then I need to apply that to my tarot reading. I don't know, I just found the, the context of the story to be distracting and not actually helpful or insightful. So this is definitely one that I am gonna sell. Next I have my Everyday Witch Tarot. I don't know, maybe I want to keep this. I haven't used it in a very long time. I forgot that I etched the sides yellow. But this is a really cutesy deck. Um, it's very magical, but like more grounded medieval <laughs> type of magical witches. It's really cute and really fun. I do think I need to give this deck another try now that I'm looking at it. It just looks really fun. So that's the Everyday Witch Tarot coming out of purgatory. Then I have my mermaid tarot. I did a whole review on this over the summer in my in the pool of my parents-in-law and I do like it. It is a great deck. It's fun. Um, the guidebook is good but I don't use it and for a while there I thought I'd like the mermaid tarot better than the everyday witch tarot. But I think I actually like the Everyday Witch Tarot maybe more. Maybe for right now. Again, this is not a deck that I'm ready to really part with yet. So, but it's really cute. I really like that there is depth in here. Look at this, a death card. I think that's really, really powerful. So, and also the wand's suit in a mermaid deck. It is really, really good. So those are just some of the things that I really, really like about this deck, which makes it very hard for me to give up on it. So I don't know. Okay, we're not going to go in any type of order. I'm just going to go from what's closest to me. So let's start with this. This is the Tarot. It is a Tarot deck by Nakisha. You can find it on nakisha.com. I got it from the Game Crafter. So this is a Tarot deck that is all about a little rat and I etched it blue and to be really honest with you I need to declutter this. This is a deck that I need to let go of. 
but I can't look at the little rat face. Look at it. It is so freaking adorable. I don't use this. I don't use this. But whenever I do a video, <laughs> I only I only open this when I have a video with like a prompt where I where I can show this deck. But and every time that I look through this deck, it is adorable and I think it's so cute. So this comes with a little piece of paper with keywords on it. Uh, I hated the paper that it was printed on, so um, you could download it from the Game Crafter website and I printed it on normal printer paper. But yeah, it is adorable. I have barely used this, but the box is already sort of ripping, so it goes there. Then another pocket tarot that I have is the Sun and Moon Tarot. This is a thought base. I don't read thought, so I just read this or WS. Some of you might hate me for that. I don't care. This is really cute. Another deck that I think I need to let go of, but I'm not ready yet. Actually, I might be ready. It's really fun. This is a deck that I wouldn't be getting rid of because I don't like it. I just don't use it. And I have other decks in my collection where I could, that I would rather pull from than this. Like, if I had to use a cutesy pocket tarot, then I want to reach for the tarot, but I don't. Um, I don't reach for this either, to be very fair. I just, I don't use it. And at first I bought this because it was pocket. I bought this one and the, what is it called? The Morgan Greer tarot, also in a tin. I already got rid of that. I didn't really love it. And I think this is another one that I um, need to say goodbye to. Let's stick with tin decks. I have my um, Wild Unknown Pocket Tarot. This is one of the decks that I'm working with for this inbox season. If you want to see all the decks that I'm using for inbox season, then that video will be linked somewhere. Um, it's still in the original order because I did um, take pictures of every single card. And... <laughs> um so that i could have it pre oh this is such a pretty card this is one of the reasons this card is one of the reasons that i wanted to get this deck because it wasn't in the like first edition of the wild unknown i know it was previously in the then picked up mass market and then they changed at least this card maybe some others as well um but yeah i have pictures of all of these decks I have it in a Google Doc. I'm going to print it. And then when I do readings, I am going to paste them in my tarot journal, which is my Book of Shadows as well. So we all know what the Waddle Known looks like, probably. If this is your first video watching any like tarot videos, hello, <laughs> welcome. This is a very popular deck. I only have the pocket edition, but that one is definitely staying. I want to get to know it better. Then I have, I also have the full size in here somewhere. We'll get to that. But I also have the tin version, the Light Tears Tarot. This is one of my favorite decks. <laughs> uh, I love this. So when I saw that it came out in Pocket Edition, I had to have it. This is the deck that I carry with me in my purse. Uh, I never have emergency tarot readings that I need to do on the go. But I just feel like, what kind of tarot reader, especially like tarot tube creator, I'm a tarot teacher as well. What kind of tarot teacher would I be if I didn't carry a tarot deck with me at all times? So, yeah. Light Seer's Tarot. Absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite decks. Um, this is not going anywhere. And neither is a full-size version. Okay, I have the When My Soul Whispered Oracle deck. I have not used this, like, pretty much at all. I've pulled from this maybe for a picture on Instagram or something and it's cute it's very simplistic I don't pull from this it's a very small deck it's very like there aren't a lot of cards the decks the deck or like the cards themselves are small which is cute and I think it would work well with smaller um, tarot decks but to be honest I think if I work with a small tarot deck I wouldn't necessarily need to work with an oracle deck as well I don't know. Like, what are my small tarot decks that I am definitely keeping? The Tarot would work with this. The Lightseers works with everything. I don't think the Wild Unknown energy goes really well with this. So another one that I'm like, 
maybe it needs to go. Uh, same with this, making magic. I wanted to have this for spell doing, spell crafting um, spells, because this uh, these cards have ideas for spells. Like you can put like a little tea light on here and then do the spell. So like a spell for safe and happy travel. You can light a candle, um, put some intentions toward that. I don't do that. I don't do that. So yeah, this is another one of those decks and I'm like, I don't need it. This can absolutely go. This is not a declutter video. I didn't mean for it to be a declutter video, just uh, a collection video, but I guess it sort of turned into that. So when you go through all of your decks, then there are bound to be some decks that you're like, I forgot that I had that. Okay, next, Dreaming Away Lenormand. This is not going anywhere. I only have two Lenormand decks and I love both of them. This is one that I put keywords on because I'm still learning Lenormand. So I put keywords on all of these cards so that when I do a Lenormand reading, that I actually you know what these cards mean. <laughs> and I don't have to keep flipping through the guidebook because I already picked the keywords and put them on the cards, you know, the keywords that I feel I associate most with these cards make the most sense to me. Because ultimately that is what are gonna reson that is what is gonna resonate most with me when I do a reading. So yeah, that is the Dreaming Way Lenormand. We do have some more smaller decks. <laughs> I have the Tarot of Trees. Oh, this is so freaking stunning. Definitely gonna pull from this in the spring and summer more. Um, this might actually work with another tree type deck that I have, but this is the Tarot of Trees and the art style is like nothing else that I have. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. The season, there's a different season per suit in the Minor Arcana. There's also one or two extra cards in the Major Arcana and it's beautiful what the creator here has done. Dana, Dana, Dana O'Driscoll. Um, I don't know if this version of the deck is still available. I'm so freaking happy that I got it. I know there was a bigger version as well. Uh, I don't think there was a standard tarot size version of this, but I'm really gl glad that I have this mini version because it just works so well. It's like not too small. It's, I don't know, it's nice. I really like this. This is like one of those, I wouldn't say favorite decks, but I do think it's really pretty great. Maybe this is my last small deck. I have one small-ish. So this is the Valoria's Tarot. This is new to me from, well, when it released in August, I think. I did a review video on this where I said, you know, it's cute. The edges are also bright pink, which I think is really great. We were in our Barbie era over the summer. So uh, it is adorable. It is simplistic. That is something that I uh, enjoy about it. This is a deck that I see myself working more with in spring, summer. So I definitely don't feel ready to sell this yet. Uh, but this is not a deck that I've been using a lot. Also because I feel like it's not really the season for this deck. Obviously you can use any deck whenever you want. But this is not a deck that I've been reaching for, that I've been wanting to work with. I've been wanting to work with other decks over this one. So um, I'm going to wait until after summer, see how often I worked with this to see if I can let it go. Okay, the last sort of smallish deck. It comes in a big box, but the cards themselves aren't that huge. This is the Tea Leaf Fortune Inspiration Cards, Cards, Oracle, whatever. I don't have all of them in here. I only have the Tea Leaf ones. There are also some month ones in there and some more. I don't remember. Uh, I have not been using these at all. Um, I can read with these, but they just aren't as much fun. I don't know. If I want to use an oracle deck, I have a ton of other oracle decks that I would rather pull from. Like, I'm sorry, I don't want a card that says egg. I don't know. I just, this, uh, I feel like I might be ready to, uh, to part 
with this one. Oracle. Sort of Oracle. Okay, now one that I absolutely freaking love. This is the Afro Avatar Tarot. It's no longer in print. I know that at one time the creator of this deck said that she wanted to do another version of it. So maybe I, 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 will, I might pick that up if it ever comes uh, out. Oh, I have a lot of glare from... Are these the Christmas lights? No, that's the window. Um, but this is based on Avatar The Last Airbender. So that is one of my comfort shows. I absolutely love that show. So having a deck with cards that represent that show and specific scenes. There are also some original uh, images in here. Let's see. Oh, we have Aang. I think that's an amazing magician. But then, let's see. This could be Sokka. I don't think it is. Let's see. There are some original um, characters in here. Let's see if I can find one. Of course, all of the ones that I'm seeing here are all um, from the show and they're really great ones too. Okay, let's show you these. Uh, the Kyoshi Warriors, first episode, freaking amazing judgment card. I love this sun card. Lover's card is so funny. Like if you, if you don't watch uh, or haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender, these are like, well, what is this? And then these are more original characters. There are a couple in there as well. I don't mind that. I would have loved to see, uh, have seen all Avatar. Um, I hope there is also a deck out there, an Avatar deck that also includes uh, The Legend of Korra, because I did really enjoy that. I don't know if that's controversial that I enjoyed that, but I did. Then we have Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot. I really, really love this deck. This is a deck that I only use for myself. I got this gifted by a wonderful viewer and I etched the sides black. Really beautiful. These are goddesses, but they're like goddess energies. They're not specific goddesses from any pantheon or any religion. So this is more about embracing the goddess energy for yourself. I really enjoy this. I feel like uh, a lot of decks that I have tend to lean more towards very bold colors because that is what I like. I like bold colors, but this is so different. It's like unlike anything that I have in my collection, but it's so good. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy that I have this deck. And this definitely is one of my favorites. It's, uh, it's a really powerful deck in my collection. Then we have the Deep, Dark and Dangerous Oracle. Funny, this was one of my Yule decks and I didn't pull from it once. I kept pulling from my Season of the Witch Oracle, also because I got that in new, so that was like the new shiny thing. I want to get to know this deck better. Oh, maybe this would go great with another deck, my Mythos Tarot, which I'll show you somewhere in this uh, pile because this is about like deep, dark, dangerous creatures. Uh, some of which are also from the Greek pantheon, like in the Mythos Tarot. But this is definitely more the darker side. I might carry this into in bulk season just a little bit, just because I do want to um, work with this deck. And it's really cool. I haven't shown you the backs of any other <laughs> cards, but doesn't matter. Ooh, there's also a texture on the box. The snakeskin texture, sort of. Interesting. Okay, then we have Scenes of the Witch in bulk. This is the one that I got in new that made me ignore my Deep, Dark and Dangerous Oracle. Uh, I did an entire review of this deck on my channel. Let me show you just the way that I kept doing it. Um, yeah, I enjoy working with this deck. It's very healing. It's all about the um, the winter energy, but in a more but like the the lightness in the dark type of energy, and I really appreciate that. I think the season of the witch oracles are super great. I have the Maven and Beltane one as well, and I'm very much looking forward to the Lemus and Letha ones coming out this year. And then the only one left is Ostera. I think I'll probably end up buying the Sawin and Yule one as well, so... Okay, this is the Green Glyphs Lenormand. 
this is the first edition and this is the other Lenormand deck that I have. I only have two, like I said. There are some doubles in this um, in this deck where you have multiple options for like the cross. They have the albatross, but I just kept with the cross. And this is a very different vibe from the Dreaming Way uh, Lenormand. I think I'm going to use this deck to do my year ahead Lenormand reading because for me Lenormand has been so freaking accurate. I have only done a couple of readings that I've like properly interpreted and wrote, written down and then was able to reflect on and those were freaking accurate. It was almost scary. So let me know if you read Lenormand as well, if you want to get into it, how it's been going for you. Yeah, Greenleaf Lenormand. Story Oracle. <laughs> Let's just keep going. I have a shit ton. I don't know by the top of my head how many decks I have, but uh, we'll see. This is a deck that is supposed to be like a creative writing inspiration deck, but you can use it as an oracle as well. I haven't worked with it a ton yet. I think this is another one of those decks that will be great for spring summer. It has more of that type of energy. I like it. It's simple. It has the white borders, the white titles. Um, and it's simple for both creative story writing, where you like pull a card, like let's see, we have fear and work. <laughs> we have fear and work, and like create a story with that. But you can also, again, use it as an oracle deck, because the guidebook does have a way for you to read it as an oracle deck as well. Sometimes you have to be a little bit more creative with it, um, but I think that's good. Then next I have the Shadow and Light Oracle. This is the one by Rockpool by Selena Moon. There's also one that has a similar name or pretty much the same name by, I think by Lucy Cavendish, if I say that correctly. But these all have dual energies. It's like a light side and a dark side. What is going on here? Oh, somewhere backwards. And I really like, uh, I really like this deck. I think it's fun. Um, I find it also very reflective because if you pull a card like this, like, are you doing the solution thing or are you holding on to the problem thing? And it really uh, helps you to reflect on what you're doing and if what you're doing is actually helping you, like, is, is actually guiding you more towards the light part or more towards the shadow part. So again, really good reflective uh, deck. It, it literally says reflection cards to unlock your unconscious mind. So then we have one of my new decks this year that is one of my favorites, the Sacred Destiny Oracle. Like I said, I got this this year. I know this is a super popular deck and everybody has this, everybody raves about it. And I was like, mm, not me. I don't know, the images aren't really my thing. I didn't really think that I would enjoy working with this deck, but I do. <laughs> I don't know what it is. The simpleness maybe of the, of the keywords here going forward. If you ask a question, you get that as your answer, you, it, it's just so clear. I feel like this is such a clear reader and I've enjoyed pulling from this for my personal readings, but also for my client readings. So this absolutely is a great deck um, to have in my collection. It's like a really good practical deck. Oh, I feel like this is almost falling. Then we have the Dark Mirror Oracle. This is definitely a shadow work type of deck. I found the guidebook to be so hard to read. There's only a couple of cards in here and I etched it black. And because the, the guidebook was so hard to read or to understand, I should say, I wrote down the keywords on the card. Also because sometimes I found the um, keyword on the card not to be clear enough that I had to look in the guidebook. And then again, the guidebook was kind of vague, wasn't really super easy to read. So I decided to do a deck study on this and I wrote down the keywords on the card. And yeah, this is a great deck, like I said, for shadow work about looking at what is hidden, something that I am um, not accepting right now, something that is holding me back, 
I think this deck is really, really great for that. And I've used it a ton for that. Then we have some decks that I don't have a box for. This is my Anna K Tarot, another one of my favorites. Uh, but I didn't like the box. I think it was another one of those boxes where you had to divide the deck in two and it would sit in it like that. Absolutely horrible. Who thought of that? This is a deck that is so grounded. Like this deck brings me down and gra being grounded is something that I struggle with. So this is a deck that I often uh, pick up and I've used this for private readings for myself, but also for client readings. Again, I think their grounded energy is great, but not just that, but look at the people. They have such expressive faces that you can really dive into the card. And it has like enough detail, but it's not too detailed for like a small card. It is amazing. And that is part of why I really love this deck is first of all, it's more grounded. It definitely has some Christianity nods in there as well, but not bad enough that it bothers me. But it also has the emotive faces that I absolutely love. Another one of my favorite decks. <laughs> this is the Good Karma Tarot. I keep um, a golden healer crystal with it. And this is the Good Karma Tarot. This was like my most used deck over the summer. It just has all the good vibes, all the vibes that I'm craving all the time because I love summer and this feels like summer in a deck. I don't know. Maybe it's the yellow bags, but I just I adore this deck. And this is such an easy reader. I use it for private and client readings. It is one of my best decks. I, I can't say this is like my top one favorite deck, but it's like top three, I guess. So that is the Good Karma Tarot. I, I keep this in a bag that I made out of a dress from the last time that I purchased from Shein, which I haven't done in four years, I think, five years maybe even. I think something like that. And I had a sunflower dress and I made a bag out of it. I made multiple bags out of it, but this is the only one that I have left. Next is my Magical Dog is a Tarot. <sighs> I rarely use this, but this is definitely not a deck that I uh, want to get rid of because I love dogs and they're so fun. This is like top dog behavior. Not like top dog, but dog behavior, like top notch, you know. And I'm looking at my two dogs right now. One of them is laying on the couch right here. Hey. And the other one is in her crate. Can you see her now? So I love my dogs. Ah, uh, and I love my dog deck. So magical dogs, tarot. Then the next deck is Tarot of the Divine. I have to think about the name for a second. I've done done started the drop em 78 challenge i did a tarot vlog on it and the first few days i was really strong with it and then of course not so much <laughs> um wait oh i should keep it in the right order should i i don't even know if i'm gonna keep going on with the drop em 78 challenge but this is a deck that has like fairy tales uh in them uh, every card represents a fairy tale, a myth, a folklore story. Um, and I don't know, I really liked it. And I really wanted to learn all of the stories. And I still do. I have the book that comes with it. And part of the Drop em 78 challenge was for me to look at the stories and see how they correspond or correlate with the card meanings. <sighs> but I guess depression kicked in and I didn't want to do it anymore. Okay. Next, I have Little Wizard's Tarot. This is a Harry Potter themed de deck by Push Kitty. I don't know if the this version is still there, but I there might be the little like the mini version of it. And this is a Harry Potter deck. I love Harry Potter. I hate the creator, but I love Harry Potter. I love the Harry Potter world. It feels so magical. I can get completely lost in the world, the books, the movies. Um, I absolutely want to read the Harry Potter series again in 2024. That's one of my reading goals for next year. And this is a deck that I rarely use because it's like 
what types of readings would I be craving to use a Harry Potter deck? But still, there is absolutely no way that I could ever, ever get rid of this deck because I love Harry Potter. So that is the little Wizard's Tarot. I like that it's indie because that means that I can have something Harry Potter related without giving money to the creator, who is a turf, which is a trans exclusive, exclusive like they, they are, they exclude trans people from their radical feminism. Um, don't love that. Okay, next we have Spread Deck. This was sent to me by the creator, Holly Nelson. And this is a deck that you can use to create your own tarot spreads. Um, ooh, now that I have my Patreon and I share a lot of tarot spreads in there, I'm definitely going to use this to create some more spreads for the, the spread library. So these are super simple. Uh, they're just prompts that you can put together as a tarot spread. So you can have, let's see, we have future, want, advice from spirit. Here, that's a tarot spread that you can use. Um, and it's super practical. It's not like, this is not an, an oracle deck. You don't get meaning from this. You use this as a basis for your tarot reading. And I thought that was really, um, really cool. Okay. I also got this from the publisher. This might hurt tarot. Liminal 11 sent this to me. <sighs> this is a deck that I said, I don't need this. You know, like a lot of people are loving this, but it, it doesn't really look like something that I would like. And now this is like top five favorite decks for me. So yeah, mm, this is amazing. I did an entire review of this deck. It is modern, it's inclusive, it is diverse, it is beautiful. And I ate my words hard when this got, when I got this in. So wonderful deck, wonderful deck amazing for client readings uh yeah if i could only keep five decks this would be one of them um i'm not only keeping five decks so don't hold me to that this might hurt tarot another deck that i got this year the journey oracle this was recommended to me by cheyenne over at velvet forest velvet forest moon and this is like these this has some new age concepts in it um, which sometimes makes it a bit strange to use, but I've gotten some really good readings with this. And it, that, that spiritual new age space is not something that is super comfortable for me, but I do want to get into that space a little bit more because the funny thing is, I already said that I have a, very, a lot of trouble being grounded. I am down to earth. It's not the same as being grounded. Um, and I feel like I keep in that comfortable down to earth space, but I need to get a little bit more, or I want to get a little bit more in that spiritual space, I guess. This deck I also got from the creators, the Millennial Tarot. This is such a fun deck, you guys. I did an entire uh, review on this. It comes with a card with spreads on it. Super fun. Definitely need to do those. Uh, it comes with an online guidebook. The cards are quite huge. But oh my god, is it fun? I don't use this deck often. Um, I used it recently for like a little reading to see... Uh, if I still vibed with this deck, I do. I very much vibe with this deck. And we have the suit of vibes. <laughs> we have the suit of swag, which is pentacles. We have the suit of feels, which is um, the cups suit. And then we have the suit of thoughts, which is the swords. And then the every card is renamed. Um, both major and minor arcana. So we have the devil is the fuck boy, high priestess is the festival goer, but then also the five of swag, which is the five of pentacles, is furlough. And I think a lot of these, first of all, really resonate with me because it's like a lot of these is like the millennial experience, um, which is painful sometimes. Um, but it just resonates, it makes sense uh, because I 
am familiar with that millennial lingo. Um, I was born in 1993. Yes, I turned 30 this year. And I don't know, it just, it resonates, it's fun. Then we have the Light Tears Tarot. Like I said, I have this in pocket edition, but I also have the full size version. <sighs> top five, maybe even top three, probably top three. This is one of the only decks that I don't like, or one of the only cards. We have the stupid pig and the legs floating in air. I don't like it. But the other cards in this deck are absolutely great. So again, I use this for private readings, for client readings. It is just an amazing all-rounder, beautiful deck that I do feel keeps me grounded. Like some of these cards feel like they look more spiritual, but overall the energy that I have with this deck when I do a reading with this deck is more grounded and down to earth, I should say. Yeah, okay. Then we have the Unfolding Path Tarot, which is energy-wise super different because this definitely takes me into that spiritual space that I find uncomfortable to be in, that I want to uh, learn to embrace a little bit more. And th this tarot deck does that. It's absolutely beautiful. It is very diverse, um, inclusive. Love it. The art style is beautiful. The backs are really pretty as well. There are some absolutely stunning cards in here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I just, uh, I love this. I haven't used this a ton because I think this is a great deck for like early spring. But I pre-ordered it early spring and then it, it only came in in like August or something. So I haven't used that deck a ton yet. Then I have the... What is it called? Ethereal Vision. Ethereal Vision's Luna Edition. Like, I'm doing this not in one take because I'm... Well, I mean in one take, yeah, but I'm editing it. But can you hear my voice slowly going? This is beautiful, you guys. Purple holographic uh, details. I do have a review on this, I think. It's beautiful. And I haven't worked with this for a while because, again, I think this is a great... Um, deck for like early spring vibes so I think this would be one of my Ostera uh, decks because right now I am dividing my decks in like um, in the wheel of the year season so oh, it's pretty I think this is gonna be one of my Ostera decks same with the unfolding path tarot I think I think don't hold me to it Okay, uh, next, I have the Tarot of the Little Prince. I have to be honest, when I got this, I learned that the Little Prince was a story, a children's story. And I was like, oh my god, how cool. We have a story and uh, there's a tarot deck around this story. But like I already said, I don't really enjoy having to refer like having to go back to the story when I see a card like what part of the story is this card and what, what does that mean I don't know I just prefer to use tarot in, as a tarot deck and not as a story so this might be a deck that um I sell as well I really wanted this deck I really wanted it and then I had it and I think it's pretty. I like the art style. I really enjoyed this story because I feel like it helps remind us that we can still do, we can still hold on to the childlike energy, which is an energy that I have a really hard time holding on to because I just feel like sometimes I take life a little too seriously. I don't know. And I feel like this is a deck that I hoped would help me combat that. But I've rarely, like, barely picked it up. I've done some readings with it for my Instagram, but I haven't used it for any personal readings. Oh, my Dreaming Way Tarot, one of my favorites. I love this deck. Again, probably top five. Have I already said that about more than five decks? I don't know. This is such a truth speaker. This is like, it doesn't, it doesn't mind being harsh to me, you know? It doesn't mind just being direct and telling me exactly what I need to hear. And you know, sometimes that's just exactly what you need. 
And this is one of those decks that I can pull from whenever I want a hard-hitting reading, an accurate reading. So like when I'm doing a reading for someone else, this is really, really great because readings with this deck are just accurate. I don't know, I find this very, very easy to read with. So this is one of those decks that I'll pull from if I want to impress someone. Not because the images are necessarily stunning and will impress the other person, but because of my reading capabilities with this deck. So absolutely off my dreaming way. Then I also have the Centennial Edition. We can be quick with this. This is the normal tarot images in the Centennial Edition. So these are the muted colors. I had the original one. The original Ride Away Space Tarot, I think it's called. I don't know, The I didn't really connect with that one. And then I was like, okay, I want to give one more RWS type deck a chance. And then I got this one and it was great. I feel really connected with that. It has a very neutral type of energy for me. Then Prism Oracle, I got this again from a subscriber or a viewer. This is so great. <laughs> I, I love color, okay? I feel like... Not all of my decks necessarily that I have a lot, have a lot of color, but there are just certain colors or types of colors that make me very happy. And I think the idea of this deck is freaking genius. You have just all of these colors and then there are some patterns on it. And then it has a super simple keyword and it just makes sense every single time. And because there are so many different colors in the other decks and only one color on each of these cards, it just always like aesthetically works. <laughs> I love that. I love it. And again, this is one of those decks that if I wanted to impress someone, I would pull this because it's super accurate and it's super easy and fun to read with. And I think this would also be great um, for someone's like first or one of the first readings that you do for them or that they have because they can sort of use only the keyword to sort of think what it means for themselves. Like that, ooh, Cesarabito Tarot. I think I got this this year. I feel like I've had it for such a long time, but I think I got it this year. And it's Golda, Gild, Gilda Gold. Oh my God. Again, top five. I think I now have said five decks in my top five. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It's a modern deck, but it doesn't show like super modern things like cell phones. But I, I just love the art style. I love the vibe of this deck. Whenever I do a reading, the cards laid out together look beautifully, look beautiful. <sighs> if you get only one indie deck, if you are like, any decks are too expensive, maybe for where you live or just because they are expensive. Or like, I would like one indie deck in my collection and that's it. The rest mass market. This is the indie deck that I would recommend that you get. It is that freaking stunning and great to read with. Uh, this was one of my decks for Yule and this is the deck that I got the most use out of, period. Absolutely like bottom line. Okay, ooh, these are very dusty. Okay, Sacred Self-Care Oracle, a deck that for a long time I, I raved about, but I haven't really used it a lot anymore because I think I've used it so much that I the prompts here is like, yeah, yeah, it's sort of the same thing every time. These are self-care prompts, and I think that's great because I think self-care, self-worth is super important. It's a very big theme here on my channel for like how I want you to feel when reading the cards and how I want to leave up anyone who books a reading with me. Self-worth, self-care, super important to me. So for that reason, I should love this deck. But I don't know, I sort of, I think I've just fallen out of love with it. Yeah. I don't know if uh, this is one that I'm going to keep. I'm not sure. Okay, then I have my Tattoo Tarot. I haven't used it a lot. This is a deck that I do really love. But again, I don't know why I haven't really reached for it. I think this would have been a great deck for in bulk. But I already had a ton of other decks that I really wanted to work with. I don't know. Hmm. I don't really know what to say. I don't really know how I feel about this deck right now. Because for a long time I raved about it, 
Because what I like is, yeah, there are pips, but here in the seven of coins, we see in the middle, we see, uh, oh God, I don't know what the English word is for that. Oh, what is the English word for that? The, the time thingy in Dutch, it's a zandloper, a sandwalker. <laughs> oh God, I don't know what it's called, but it's like symbolism within the pips, you know? So that is a reason that I really like this deck. And whenever I read with it, it's neutral, but it's truthful, it's direct, but not necessarily in a gentle way, but just in a, here's what you need to know, kind of way. Yeah, I do like this deck. I don't know, I haven't really used it a ton. I don't know why that is. Next, Ooh, wait, Ugh. next. I have my Wake Me Up Tarot. This is the deck that I got when I was like, this is my modern deck instead of the This Might Hurt Tarot. And I have this now, I have this now, and I rarely use it, which is a shame because it's an indie deck. It wasn't necessarily cheap. It's, uh, it's somewhat inclusive, you know, somewhat diverse. There's a lot of modern um, imagery going on here, a lot of modern um, things like cell phones, like the Hermit card. I do like the Hermit card. Here we have a cell phone in the uh, four, five, five of cups. Um, but I know that in the Hermit card, there's like a laptop in a cage. So that's very symbolic. Then we have the four of cups. We have them in front of a computer screen. So this is definitely more that type of modern. And there's definitely, I think, a lot to learn from this deck, a lot to be gained from this deck. But for some reason, I'm just not really reaching for it. I don't know. I'm coming to a lot of conclusions or like a lot of half conclusions <laughs> throughout this filming this video. I don't know. If you have any advice for me, anything that you're like, if I was you, I would get rid of it, sell it, keep it. Let me know. Give me your opinions. I'm asking for your opinions. Okay. Then I have the Orient Animal Tarot. What can I say? I don't use this deck. I love animals. Like I, like I said, the Magical Dogs Tarot. I love dogs. I do love all animals. And I really wanted to learn more animal symbolism. And this is the deck to do that. Because the guidebook actually has the different animals and what they mean and all of that. So that can help you interpret the cards. Um, so here in the moon, pretty sure that's like a rabbit or something. And then it would have in the guidebook the meaning of like what the what the rabbit would mean and probably also how it relates to the moon card. But I just don't reach for this. I find the artwork a little bit too dark to make out sometimes. I do a lot of my tarot reading more in the evenings and at night and I can just barely make out what's on the card sometimes and that bothers me it bothers my eyes i think this is another one of those decks that i can let go of because i'm also like okay yeah the deck i don't necessarily personify as in i think it has like feelings and emotions and thoughts but i do think that like okay if i have it and i don't use it like wouldn't the deck be happier if it was with someone who would love it and use it i just makes sense to me. Then I have my Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle. I haven't used this a ton because again it's one of those spring summer vibe uh, decks for me at least. Also the cards are kind of big and there aren't a lot of cards so for a while there I pulled from this deck a ton and then again it feels like it's becoming a little bit repetitive you know so I have to take a break from it and then I can come back to it later. I mean, I have I have plenty of decks to um, move on to for a little bit before I come back to this one. But it's fun. It's cute. It's empowering. Here, protest. Start a revolution. The next tower. Unplug and relax for a spell. And it's just fun. It's magical. It's like, this is how you bring magic to the mundane. And I think that's really, really fun. It's cute as well. So I do like this deck. I like the sort of mundane witchy type of vibe in here. Okay, this is new to me. I got this in the month of December. 
Tree Keepers Oracle. I did do a review on it in December. This is such a beautiful deck. Uh, I have fallen in love with this deck. The Tree Keepers, it's like... The vibe is quite spiritual. The creator created this deck with the idea that you pull one card at a time and you really dive deep into the message of that Tree Keeper. And the artwork is very intricate, 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 intricate I don't know, <laughs> it's very detailed. So there's a lot to get lost in with these cards and I think that's really really wonderful. So again this is a deck that I'm using for in bulk. Um, and I might carry it into Ostera as well, just because I am so in love with this deck. I want to use it more and more and more and more. So that is the Tree Keepers Oracle. Again, I have a whole video on like what this deck is, how it reads, how I've enjoyed it. I have a whole review of that um, on my channel if you want to watch that. Um, this is also new to me. Mythos, Mythos, Tarot. You guys, this deck is so stunning. It is, it doesn't have scenes, it has more portraits of um, gods, goddesses, and beings in the Greek pantheon. It is golden gilded. Freaking stunning. We're starting with the Fool with Pan. And then we have this one. Oh my god, it is so beautiful. I am sort of a little speechless when looking through this deck. Also because I've been filming for an hour and um, it's, getting, I mean, it's getting hard to catch my breath, you know? But it's also just because this deck is really, really beautiful. And I, I can't really say much about this deck because by the time I'm... Uh, around the time that I'm filming this, I just haven't really used it much. This is a deck that I'm using for in bulk season, so I hope by the time this video goes live, I have uh, read a ton with it. But yeah, it's so beautiful so beautiful and i'm really excited about this deck i knew as soon as i saw this um on amazon i saw it in my deck releases video i do a video every month about the decks that are coming out next month you know mass market decks we're in the home stretch this is do you say that the home stretch the last stretch the last couple of decks this is the last pile that we need to get through star codes astro oracle this is all astrology themed but it's like um, deep, like deep in astrology. So it's not just the houses, the planets, the signs, but it's also the aspects, some asteroids as well. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't really used this. Again, I think this is one of those decks that I use more for uh, early spring, springtime. I like this. The artwork is. For me, at least, nothing like super special, nothing that I can really dive into, um, like unlike the Tree Keepers Oracle, but it's really more about the astrology with this. Um, I did an entire deck study. I, I think I should print it out, actually. Um, I have a whole like cheat sheet on uh, of keywords for every card. Um, so I would use, I, I, I use this deck um, if I want to know like, what thing is going on in the transits in the charts right now that is affecting me so i would pull a card if it was like fourth house and i would look at what does fourth house mean and how do i see that that is affecting me or playing a role in my life right now then we have the citadel oracle really beautiful i got this gifted from liminal 11 as well i got the whole special edition i did a whole review of this this deck is so beautiful <laughs> Funny thing is, I did a tag um, last month, and for the prompt that I used the Citadel, I like cut out the entire part that I was talking about the Citadel Oracle. Um, but it's so freaking beautiful. The sides are uh, red. It's an odd shape, but it's like still comfortable to hold. And this is such a beautiful deck. It has some. It's not holographic, but like like those kind of details. It's a really fun deck and there's um, another part. I guess I have two more decks, but they're in their special editions. And one of them goes with the Citadel Oracle and the other one goes with the This Might Hurt Tarot. Um, yeah, so I guess I have two more, but I don't really think they're too important to show right now because they're only available in the special edition. So yeah, it's a really pretty deck. I haven't used it a ton 
since the summer because I received this in the summer. I played a lot, a lot with it in the summer. A little early fall as well because I pulled from this deck quite a few times for my Mindful Mondays when I still did them. Okay, next, Pulp Girls Tarot. I definitely haven't use this deck a lot. This is also one of those that I think it's really fun. I think it's really great. I like decks with like a black border. I don't know. I just enjoy looking at it. And the art style is really cute and fun. I like the outfits that they have on and all of these. But I rarely reach for this because when I want an RWS type of deck, then there are other decks that I grab first. Or I would grab the This Might Hurt or the Lightseer Tarot over this one. So this might be a deck that I declutter. But also I'm like, why would I? Because I think this is a really fun deck. But I just haven't reached for it for like the last, I want to say year. But I, don't quote me on that. I'm not really sure. So yeah, the Pulp Girls Tarot. They're really fun to follow on Instagram, the Pulp Girls. Okay, we're almost there. Then I have the... Find your inner peace inspiration cards. It comes with a little thing where you can put your card in. Uh, these have like quotes, sort of, not really, intentions. Like this one says, being loud and powerful, I'm maintaining my standards and ideals and I'm proudly loud and powerful about them. That is one of my favorites in this deck. And there are some intentions. So that is great if, you, if you're about intention settings or if you want to pull an intention or affirmation something like that for the week for the month for the year i definitely want to pull an uh, affirmation for the year i'm gonna do that today or later this week so this is a fun deck it's not necessarily something to like rave about for me but it's fun let's see then i have Two more Season of the Witch decks, like I said. I have the Maven one. This is by the same illustrator as the Imbolc one, and it is my favorite um, illustrator for these decks because it's like more drawn. And this is the fall type of vibe vibes that I do like. I'm not really a fall winter type of girly. I do better in the spring and definitely in the summer. But these are the kind of fall vibes that I can get into, you know the warm and cozy vibes not what it is right now like all the trees are empty and it's storming outside it's freaking cold and it's the wind is blowing our fences away like literally a few weeks ago it was storming and one of our fences broke down so that was fun okay last one but that's maven and then i also have belting the season of the witch belting Oracle was the first one that I got from the Season of the Witch um, series and it makes me so excited for the Lemus and Letha ones that are coming out because it's more spring-summer vibes. But as you can see it is a different art style and it has a different vibe uh, around it completely. Like we had this one is like summer, like Beltane is May, right? So it's spring. May is spring. <laughs> but late spring, almost summer. And then we have Maven, which is fall. Then we have Imbolc, which is winter. So I have sort of a little bit of everything. Uh, and I'm really excited for the other decks to come. Let me know which um, Season of the Witch decks you have. Season? Seasons. Seasons of the Witch. You guys, I am going crazy. It's been an hour and five minutes. I have one deck left to show for you guys. It is the White Newman Tarot. Uh, it's a deck that I'm going to be using um, for my inbox season. So I hope to uh, really get some use out of this. And it's just pretty. This is one of those decks that is super pretty. I will warn you, there is some nakedness in here. Woo! Boobs. So, but I like this deck. Like I said, it's pretty it's aesthetic when I pull cards from this it like aesthetically looks pretty which <sighs> might be superficial I don't really care I've been filming for over an hour I don't really care that it's super I never care that it's superficial um, because ultimately tarot cards you look at them and you want them to be pretty and you buy them for the artwork because you think it's pretty or you think it's aesthetically pleasing you know and that is the case with this deck for me it's beautiful. And I do have to say the energy with this 
deck when I do a reading with it, it's more neutral and cool leaning, you know? Yeah, so that is the white Newman Tarot and those were all the decks that I have. Yeah, this is my entire deck collection. When you look at it like that, it doesn't look that bad because there are there are rows behind here, but uh, so I cheated a little. But yeah, those were all the decks that I had. Uh, there are definitely some decks that I can lose in my collection that I can pass on, sell. I'm tired. I need a coffee. I need a coffee and I need to stay silent for the rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see videos where I do more like little mini roundup videos and tags uh, and also how I show you how to actually use your decks. Um, if you want to see any of that, subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you there. If you want to deep dive more into your practice and align your tarot practice more with astrology, with the moon, then I recommend you check out my Patreon. I'll have it linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you so much for watching me for an hour and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!